Welcome back. So after last week's disappointing outcome, I'm going to pull the engine out, check the engine over, let you have a look inside, check the free power section over, we can have a close look at that. So at the end of the video, we'll try and do another run, but who knows? Let's get on with it. Okay, let's get the engine out. So the engine's out, if only it happened that quickly in real life, eh? And that easy. Uh, before I, I have a chat about the engine, I just want to have a, a quick chat about the free power section, just to explain a little bit more how it all works and the energy that's involved, why, why we've got uh, the clutch there. At the end of the day, this is unlike my mate's bike in Sweden, which is his, is his land speed bike, so he's got a, a long run to build his power up. Primarily I designed this bike as a as a um, drag bike so you need to get off the line as quickly as possible so we're trying to utilize some stored energy to overcome the inertia which is the resistance to uh, of an object to uh, change its state as in at rest to in motion so we'll have a quick chat about that right to the free power section in my hands here, I've got the NGV section. Its job is to turn the gases that come out of the engine into these NGVs, nozzle guide vanes. And what they do is they guide the, the gases at an appropriate angle to interact with the turbine blades on the turbine rail in the free power section. Basically, the angle to match the angle of these turbine blades to extract as much power as possible out of the flowing gases. This then, as I said before, is connected to a shaft which goes to the back wheel. But in here, we've got a clutch. Now with this being a drag bike, as I said, what you need to do is you need to get off the line as quickly as possible. So what we're utilising is the reduction gear. As I've said before, this is about three and a half kilos in weight and about 12 inches in diameter. When that's at mo in motion at 3000 RPM or five revolutions a second, there's about uh, 70 joules of, uh, 70 joules a second that is, of stored energy. Um, to give you an idea of what 70 joules is in energy, if I was to stick a, a socket on the end of there, um, I'd have a bar that was 56 feet long with a one pound weight sat on the end of it to give you the equivalent force. Now when we release that energy it helps us change the state of the bike and when I say state of the bike I mean it's at rest state. What you've got to do is you've got to overcome inertia and inertia is a body's resistance to a change in its state. So you want to go from stationary to moving. So you need as much energy as possible to do that. Hence why we utilize the weight and the potential kinetic energy that's stored in this flywheel. So when we're on the line, it's all spinning freely, 3000 RPM, clutch comes in, and then the power or the energy or the workforce gets transferred to the back wheel along with the energy that's continuously being produced by the the engine through the free power section. I have put some links below to explain probably in more detail links to sites that explain how you can work out the, the kinetic energy of a rotating mass, explanations, pure explanations of the terms inertia and kinetic energy so if you want to have a look in the description below to explain it a bit better for you so now we'll uh, we'll pull the engine apart you can have a look inside 
and we'll find out what state it's in. So we've got the engine out, um, John Wallace 994 engine. Just before I pull it apart, I'll explain some of the, the pipe work that's on it. That's the uh, the main case, main case drain. That um, allows air at the back of the compressor wheel to escape because if the air built up at the back of the compressor wheel, it would try and push the compressor wheel forward. I use that air to um, inflate a labyrinth seal that's on the, uh, the shaft tunnel of the free power section, so it's not put. It's not wasted, it's used and it's put to good good purpose. That's why sometimes when the engine, when you see the bike running and we shut the engine off, you see a bit of smoke and it's the oil um, that's allowed to pass by because there's no air inflating that seal. It, basically the air acts as a bit of a pressure dam to stop the oil from, from coming out. That's the, uh, the oil outline. Um, the reason we have a scavenge pump on the bike is basically the, the oil tank isn't below the level of the engine it's to the rear of the bike so we have to move the oil normally that would just drain straight out into a, a tank which would sit below the engine a bit like the, the main oil return off your turbocharger on your car normally just exits straight into the sump of the engine and then here on the other side we've got the uh, the main oil in fuel in and this one here it's for your, your propane supply. When, when the engine's in operation, that one there and that one are, are, are linked together. That one is, is, is air in, which actually goes into the oil galleries to help oil be expelled from the oil galleries. And the way that the, it gets its air is when we, we start up, there's a solenoid valve, the gas goes in there, the propane to preheat the evaporators, and then once the engine's running and the gas is off, the solenoid valve opens. That allows some of the compressed air that's in here to come back out the, uh, the propane line and then into that air in and then into the oil gallery or into the, the bearing journals, which again helps you all get out the engine. So uh, we'll get the can off and uh, turn it on, it, on its front and uh, we'll have a look at the combustion chamber and see what state the uh, evaporation tubes are in the, uh, the injectors. So we'll get on with that. That's the inside of the engine, there's the combustion chamber, John's done a really nice job of this. Um, I know he, he goes on about how limited he is with the tools he's got and everything but I don't think it's quite amazing what he, he produces in his workshop uh, with his, his limited tools. That's the, the main fuel line in, there's a ring there with I was mate yeah sorry that's all right just give me one second that that's the main fuel in you can see the ring around there it's got 18 syringes in and that's the propane line and then that's got a couple of syringes that direct the propane. I'll just zoom in. I think you could just about make out the, the syringe injectors there 
just there here that go into the evaporator tubes you can see the compressor wheel is still a good colour there's no damage on it so uh, I think I'll uh, check out the the fuel lines make sure we're getting fuel to all the injectors the uh, there's a bit of soot which, so everything generally looks pretty good the compress the turbine wheel looks good there doesn't appear to be any damage to that I mean it's seen some heat there's a bit of soot on the the fuel rails and the combustion chamber but that was probably down to the fact that there was um, some fuel in the bottom of the engine that just burnt but but generally everything looks really good nothing looks broken all of the evaporator tubes still the silver solder is all secure nothing's melted so I think it will be a case of just putting some clutch and brake cleaner down the, the fuel line check those over um, quick clean up inside put it all back together and hopefully it was just literally the the, the, uh, the starter spitting the o-ring out um, but we'll, we'll find out as I say we're going to try and run the engine again in the bike uh, we'll do a leaf blower start which will uh, I'll explain when we, we do it it's basically a, a baseline starting procedure using a leaf blower and we'll dial the fuel in but uh, yeah I'll uh, start cleaning everything up putting it all back together and get it back in the bike and uh, we'll go for an engine start so that's pretty much it for this video uh, being as I want to do two starts and I want to go through the leaf blower start and what we do in the fuel system in the next video I thought I'd just cut this one a little bit short don't forget the competition is still running from last week's video with the £50 cash prize and the uh, the two t-shirts up for grab all you've got to do is answer one question put your answer in the description in the uh, comment section below and you you're in with a chance of winning so uh, you know the score like dislike subscribe and uh, click on uh, notifications if you want it's up to you but uh, as i say next video we'll do two engine starts and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> say two engine starts we might do another another start and just end up with flames but who knows we'll, we'll crack on so uh, till next time thanks a lot guys thanks for watching guys like and subscribe if you want you know the score I hope you've enjoyed the video let me know how I'm doing comment below but uh, till next time take care